looks at the vegetation of, of uh, South Africa, the northern part forms part of the Old World flora, also known as the uh, 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 Paleotropical Kingdom. And, but, and that is the, the region really that is subject to summer rainfall. But if one looks at the, the area which is so rich in, in diversity, it's really the winter rainfall area. And this includes from the Richtersveld uh, right down to, the, uh, to Cape Town, Cape Folded Mountains in the south and going right to the, the Port Elizabeth region. And so it's more or less a semi-coastal area. Uh, and it is this region which are known as the Cape Floristic region. And this region is extremely rich. It, uh, it has more species than any of the other uh, uh, world's floral kingdoms. And if one starts right up there in the north, the Richtersveld, and then Namakuland follows, so it's all areas we, which experience summer aridity. These northern parts are, are really se uh, semi-desert areas. And if one goes further south, when the rainfall increases, and especially the, the start getting the Cape Folded Mountains, uh, then one gets into the area of Feinbos and uh, uh, all the, the, the true uh, uh, Cape Floristic region with the acidic soils and going further uh, down to, to Cape Town, the Cape Flats, and in areas as well. And if one look at Feinbos, one can even subdivide it in, uh, into uh, uh, smaller uh, units, like for instance the Renosterfeld, which are usually on the more heavy soils. Feinbos proper occurs only on the, the very, very poor uh, soils of the Cape Folded Mountains. And then also the Strandfeld. Strandfeld regions are usually on alkaline sand, right at the coast, here along the, the sea area and uh, going right through to Port Elizabeth. But so this area uh, where you get Feinbos, or, or a proper Feinbos, is from the Cedarburg in the north, really starting at Nieboudville, and going right down uh, via the, the Goedwindruk Mountains, and then the, the Hottentots Holland Mountains, the Higgs River Mountains, then the, the uh, uh, Langeberg Mountains, and the Fieshorn End Mountains. And also between the uh, Langeberg Mountains and the Groot Swartberg, area is lies a region also in the in the rain shadow and that's really the little karoo and in this region the vegetation is termed as saccharin karoo but saccharin karoo really not only occurs here but it's it's also uh, very very common or dominant in the namakuland region and then in the richtersveld region but little uh, uh, pockets of feinbos can be found within the the uh, this region the saccharin karoo region up in the higher mountains for instance the kamisberg and as well on the Richtersveld, uh, the highest mountain, the Van der Sterberg. So remnants of it occur, and the rest is just uh, uh, Sakhalin Kuru. But all of these uh, uh, regions are adapted, uh, uh, or, or uh, the, the, the main climatic factor shaping the vegetation are the long dry summers. Then a lot of other factors, for instance, the, the, uh, the northern part, the Richtersveld, is extremely dry. It's, a, it's, it's known as a, as a mountain desert part. So the vegetation are very well, well adapted to aridity and uh, almost 90% of the vegetation consists of succulent plants. So almost all the plants, if one go into the area which you feel touch, uh, uh, will be juicy and succulents. And it's a, it's a fantastic strategy for the, uh, the long summer siesta, the summer resting season for these plants uh, 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 to cope. When they store uh, literally uh, uh, water within their, uh, their leaves, stems or roots. And uh, uh, also within the, the Sakran Karu region, the family that's really the, the most important of them are the Feighi family, or the Mesen Brandt and Mesi. Uh, and they've got amazing about them is they have many leaf, leaf succulents, but it's the fruiting capsules. They've got beautiful, brilliant flowers, but after the flowers, you get these fruiting capsules and they are wonderfully engineered. They're known as the, the world's uh, uh, most complicated fruit structures. And they've got little capsules and these little capsules are amazing adapted that they only with the rain they will open up. They've got little uh, uh, expanding keels that with moisture, they take up moisture and they, it will push open the capsule and then exposing the seeds. But the seeds make uh, uh, or the dispersal agent is, is water, in other words it's raindrops, but it's the, the gravity. It's the velocity of the, the raindrops on the capsule which makes these uh, seeds spat out in various directions around the capsule. So, so that is amazing and there's a reason for that. These mesomes are specialists so they want to remain in their habitat and, that, and that's why dispersal is in the immediate vicinity of the plant. You take for instance other plants such as uh, 
Sampratya species have got uh, uh, feathery leaves or feathery seed which is dispersed by wind. So Mesmus wants to say that it's a specialist group. But, and also after rain, coming back to this little capsule, uh, uh, after rain, the, the same keels that expand will contract and then closing the, the capsule again. So the seeds will only be dispersed uh, while it rains and then after the rain event, the seed will conserve it again in its capsule. But that's just one of many, many amazing adaptations. And you can think that the, uh, uh, talking about the succulent plants, the world's, uh, one of the world's largest aloe species occur there, and that's the, 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 the bastard quiver tree, aloe pilansi, which is the, uh, almost the biggest of the four uh, arborescent or tree-like aloe spe species. And aloe pilansi only occurs in that region. And it's a very, very rare, uh, very few branches, but like a, a beautiful, uh, gr a grotesque tree with rosettes on its apices. Flowering in October month, beautiful yellow flowers adapted to be pollinated uh, by birds. <laughs>